In today's video we'll be discussing the TCA cycle, otherwise known as the citric acid cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. And in the previous video we discussed how pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA. So if you've not seen that video make sure you go back one video and check that one out first before watching this one. Uh, if you have seen it we'll move on from there. So we have acetyl-CoA which is the product and in the TCA cycle the acetyl-CoA goes on and combines with a molecule of oxaloacetate and this is um, catalyzed by an enzyme known as citrate synthase and how it works is oxaloacetate first binds onto this enzyme and it creates a structural change which generates a binding site for the acetyl-CoA and then acetyl-CoA binds on and then it's converted into citrate by citrate synthase and then following on from this citrate is then isomerized and converted into uh, isocitrate via an enzyme known as aconitase so it's basically re its structure is basically reorganized and it forms isocitrate going on from here the isocitrate is then uh, oxidized and decarboxylated and it's done so via the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase and this step is an irreversible reaction obviously because the CO2 is released as a gas so it can't go backwards and have CO2 combine with alpha ketoglutarate so it's an irreversible reaction and the yield is NADH and carbon dioxide it's decarboxylation because the carbon dioxide is removed and it's oxidation because oxidation is uh, loss of electrons and these electrons are lost from isocitrate and gained by NAD plus uh, to form NADH going on from this uh, oh no just another quick point uh, this step which we've just mentioned is a rate limiting step of the TCA cycle because the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase it's allosterically activated so it's got an activator and an inhibitor inhibitor so it's activated by ADP and calcium ions and it's inhibited by ATP and NADH which makes sense because if there's high levels of ATP and NADH it shows that there's uh, high amounts of energy so the cell has enough energy already so then it this enzyme is inhibited going on from there we now have alpha ketoglutarate and the alpha ketoglutarate is then oxidized and decarboxylated again um, and uh, the enzyme is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase which is actually a complex so it's alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex and it's similar to the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex we mentioned in the previous video because it uses the same coenzymes and um, carbon dioxide and NADH are produced again uh, this enzyme complex the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex is activated by calcium and it's inhibited by NADH and also succinyl CoA so when there's high levels of NADH and succinyl CoA uh, the enzyme is inactive and then going from on from this we have succinyl CoA and succinyl CoA is then cleaved uh, the enzyme succinyl CoA synthetase or otherwise known as succinate thiokinase uh, cleaves this high energy thioester bond which is inside the succinyl CoA and uh, the reaction itself is uh, paired with the phosphorylation of guanosine diphosphate and the result is the coenzyme A with the sulfur group attached and GTP now the GTP is well it can be converted into ATP by a nucleoside diphosphate kinase reaction so GTP plus adenosine diphosphate 
can give GDP and ATP. So moving on from this step, we have succinate, which is produced. Succinate is then oxidized into um, fumarate by the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. Uh, FAD is used as a coenzyme and at the same time FAD is reduced to FADH2. Um, another point is succinate dehydrogenase is the only enzyme in this whole stage which is embedded on the inner mitochondrial membrane. That's just a quick point. And uh, in this stage FAD is used as a electron acceptor and it's used as an electron acceptor instead of NAD plus remember you we used NAD plus here but on this stage FAD is used and this is done because it's reducing power uh, isn't well the reducing power of succinate isn't powerful enough to reduce NAD plus so we use FAD and then following on from this stage we have fumarate which is produced from this reaction um, and fumarate is basically hydrated so water is added so fumarate is hydrated to malate and this reaction is freely reversible uh, the enzyme is fumarase which catalyzes this reaction or it's called fumarate hydratase and then finally we have the oxidation of malate into oxaloacetate and this is done by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase and this reaction produces the third and final NADH of the cycle and that's everything for the TCA cycle just this is just basically an overview of the whole cycle in the next video we'll be discussing the na the energy yield everything that's produced and some small points on regulation so thanks for watching